When the big man era of the 70s ended, a new pair of rivals came into the league, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And because we just ended Kareem's overview, it's only fair that we start with Kareem's best teammate, Magic Johnson. In his freshman year of college, Johnson went to a predominantly white school where Irvin struggled to get the respect of his white teammates. He was often ignored by these teammates, never having the ball passed to him. But Johnson would eventually earn the respect of his white teammates, and in his sophomore year, he would earn the nickname Magic in a triple-double performance where Magic recorded 36 points, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists. In his final high school season as a senior, Johnson led Everett to a 27-1 record and a state championship. Johnson would be known as the best high school player in Michigan, and he was named a McDonald's All-American. Despite being recruited by many top college teams, Magic decided to stay in Michigan, attending Michigan State University, because the head coach would allow the 6'9 Johnson to play point guard. Johnson averaged 17, 8, and 7 as a freshman, and led the Spartans to a 25, and 5 record. They would reach the Elite Eight and lose to the champion Kentucky Wildcats. In Johnson's second season, the Spartans would qualify for the NCAA tournament, tournament, and they would face Indiana State, who were led by Larry Bird. This matchup would become the most watched college basketball game ever, and Johnson would win in the first game of their long-standing rivalry, winning the Most Outstanding Player of the Tournament award. Johnson would then declare for the NBA draft, where he would be selected first overall by the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, unlike most players taken number one overall, Johnson was drafted into an amazing situation with LA. The pick used to take Magic originally belonged to the Jazz which the Lakers got in exchange for Gail Goodrich. The Lakers were actually a talented team, with the best player in the NBA at the time, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, on the roster as well as Jamal Wilkes, who averaged 20 a game, and Norm Nixon, who averaged 17 points and 8 assists. Johnson would lose out on the Rookie of the Year award to none other than Larry Bird, but he would make the All-Rookie first team and be named an All-Star with averages of 18 points, 7.7 rebounds, and 7.3 assists. The Lakers won 60 games in the regular season and would reach the NBA Finals, where they would face the Julius Irving-led Sixers after going up 3-2. Kareem missed Game 6 due to an ankle injury, so Lakers coach Paul Westhead decided to start Magic Johnson at center. Magic would put up 42 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals, and he led the Lakers to a Game 6 and Series victory. Because of that game, Johnson would become the only rookie in NBA history to win Finals MVP. Magic's second season wasn't nearly as glamorous. He missed 45 games with a left knee injury, then came back just in time for the 81 playoffs, where he fit in awkwardly, and as a result, the 54-win Lakers were upset by the 40-win Rockets, losing 2-1 in the first round, after Johnson airballed a last-second shot in Game 3. In his third season, Magic became one of the most disliked players in the NBA. After signing the biggest NBA contract ever at the time, Johnson would then demand a trade due to 
a dispute with head coach Paul Westhead. This dispute was due to Westhead having a slower paced offense, which went against Johnson's fast paced style. Lakers owner Jerry Buss decided to fire Westhead instead of trading Johnson. A player getting a coach fired is more common and accepted in the modern NBA, but in the 80s it was not. So Magic was booed all around the league, including in LA. Despite all the controversy, Johnson nearly averaged a triple double, averaging 18.6 points, 9.6 rebounds, and 9.5 assists, as well as a league high 2.7 steals. And he became the third player in NBA history to put up 700 points, 700 rebounds, and 700 assists in the same season. The Lakers would make their way to the finals once again to face the Sixers, and Johnson would win his second finals MVP after getting a triple double with 13, 13, and 13. The Lakers would make the finals again, but Johnson's teammate Norm Nixon, James Worthy, and Bob McAdoo were all injured, and they faced the Sixers, who added Moses Malone. The Lakers would lose in a sweep. After this, Lakers general manager Jerry West traded Norm Nixon, which allowed Johnson to no longer have to share ball handling duties, which allowed Magic to average a league high and career high 13 assists, along with 17 points and 7 rebounds. The Lakers made it to the finals again, this time to face Bird's Celtics for the first time in the finals. The Lakers won game one, but would narrowly lose game two after Magic failed to get up a shot before the final buzzer. In game four, he had the ball stolen and missed two free throws in the last minute of the game. Harris steals the ball and the Celtics call a timeout with three seconds to play. He misses the first. Biggest lead of the game, the Lakers, 14 points in the second period. Johnson misses them both, third the rebound. And he had the ball stolen late in game seven. The failure from this series would result in him being dubbed as Tragic Johnson. The Lakers led by Magic would face the Celtics again. In game one, the Lakers would allow a finals record 148 points, so bad start. But 38-year-old Kareem put up 30 and 17 in Game 2. Kareem also had 36 in Game 5. The Lakers would win in six games because of his big performances, so Kareem would win the Finals MVP over Magic. Next season, Kareem could not handle a 23-year-old Hakeem Olajuwon in the post in the Western Conference Finals, so they would lose. By the next season, Magic stepped up his game, averaging a career-high 23.9 points and 12 assists. This led to him winning MVP. The Lakers faced the Celtics once again. In Game 4, Magic would put up his iconic game-winning hook. Byron Scott is in the ball game now. Five seconds to go. Magic with a hook shot. Scores with two. The Lakers would go on to win the championship. Magic won Finals MVP with averages of 26 points, 13 assists, 8 rebounds, and 2.3 steals, and he did this on 54% shooting. And with that game winner, he removed himself from the nickname Tragic Johnson. Next season, the Lakers would again win a championship, beating the Bad Boy Pistons. But James Worthy would walk away with the Finals MVP because of his 36 point, 16 rebound, and 10 assist performance in Game 7. This would be Johnson's fifth and final championship. Magic would win MVP, lose to the Bad Boy Pistons in the Finals next season after Kareem retired. Johnson won his third MVP. Then the season after, they lost to the Michael Jordan led Chicago Bulls. Before the 91 92 season, in a physical, Magic found out that he had contracted the HIV virus. He then called for a press conference and shocked the basketball world. Because of the, the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. Uh, today. Despite retiring, Magic was voted as an all-star for the 92 season and he would play and wins MVP, putting up 25 points, 9 assists, and 5 rebounds. He also played with the Dream Team. He would return to the Lakers in the 95-96 season, coming off of the bench for 32 games as a power forward, averaging 14-7-6 and six as a 36-year-old, and then he would retire officially after the 96 season. Converse made a pair of bird shoes for last year's MVP. Yep. 
when they made a pair of magic shoes for this year's MVP. Okay, Magic, show me what you got. The Bird Shoe, the Magic Shoe. Choose your weapon from Converse. Magic is, to most people, the greatest passer of all time. He averaged 11.2 assists per game for his career. He is fifth all-time in assists despite retiring prematurely. Had he not retired, if he averaged 10.5 assists for the four years that he was retired with HIV, playing 75 games each season, he would move up to second all-time with 13,291 total assists. And if he had averaged 18 points per game for those four years, he would have a career total of 23,000. 107 points, moving him from 80th all-time to 30th all-time and he would move up from 21st to 8th in steals. Magic won 5 championships, was finals MVP for 3 of those championships, won MVP 3 times, was All-NBA first team 9 times, second team once, and was a 12-time All-Star winning 2 All-Star MVPs. Magic's case for GOAT definitely has to be his ability to score and pass at elite levels. Passing better than anyone besides for maybe John Stockton, and being a good, albeit not amazing, scorer. He also averaged 7 rebounds a game game and nearly averaged a triple-double in 92, Magic was a very versatile player and that versatility led to the Lakers winning 5 championships. But some would argue that being 6'9 playing point guard gave Magic a significantly unfair advantage. Even if he wasn't being guarded by a point guard, that meant that the opposition's point guard was guarding the Lakers shooting guard or small forward, so that was a mismatch that Magic could get an assist off of. His size was definitely a huge factor in why he was so versatile but at the same time, it's not Magic's fault for using his height to his advantage. Magic also had a hell of a supporting cast. He is the only player in this doc that was teammates with another Goatmentary candidate, besides for him being a teammate with that candidate, which was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Having the all-time scoring leader on your roster definitely helped. He also had James Worthy as a teammate who was a great scorer for the Lakers and a Hall of Famer. Magic also lost out on two finals MVPs and underperformed terribly against the Celtics in the finals. Even if he redeemed himself, that epic collapse is still a significant stain on his career. So Magic was a great passer, a versatile player, and winner, but the winning he experienced as a player could be heavily attributed to the amount of help that he had throughout his career. When the name Magic Johnson is said out loud, the name Larry Bird doesn't fall far behind.
As a freshman in high school, Bird broke his foot and missed most of the season, but he would routinely still practice with the team, putting up shots while using crutches at the same time, which was an amazing example of how dedicated Bird was to the game. Bird would sneak to the gym in between classes and stay after school to get shots up. Larry would spend every free moment he had on a basketball court, even limiting his sleep time so he could practice more. Bird would be a starter as a junior, being a do-it-all player in an era where those were rare. He was the second leading scorer, and he was the best rebounder and passer on the team. He would step up his game significantly in his senior year, averaging 31 points and 21 rebounds. Bird received a scholarship to play college ball for his hometown Indiana Hoosiers, then he dropped out after struggling to adjust to the vastly different college environment, but he would eventually enroll with Indiana State. He he would have an amazing three-year career with the Sycamores, averaging 30-13-5 over his three years. They would go 33-0 in his junior season, leading them to the 1979 NCAA Championship game to play Magic Johnson's Spartans, where Bird would struggle, shooting 33% from the field, and the Sycamores would lose. Bird was drafted in 1978, even though he would play for Indiana State in the 1978-79 season. There were no rules in place at the time that said you couldn't draft players who were not yet coming to the NBA. So the Celtics drafted Bird 6th overall with the intention to sign him once he was done with college. After this draft, a rule was implemented called the Bird Collegiate Rule, which would prevent this from happening again. In his rookie season, Bird would completely transform the Boston Celtics. In the season before before drafting him, the Seas would win only 32 games. With Bird, they would have the best record in the East with 61 wins, a 29 game improvement. Bird would average 21, 10, and 4.5 assists, shooting 47% from the field and 40% from three. Bird would win Rookie of the Year, but the Celtics would lose to the Sixers in the conference finals. In the offseason, the Celtics would acquire two Hall of Fame big men. The Celtics owned the first pick in the draft that they got in a trade from the Pistons, and they traded that pick to the Warriors for center Robert Parrish and the third overall pick that they used to select power forward Kevin McHale, one of the biggest heists in NBA history. Bird would average 21, 11, 5.5 assists, 2 steals, and a block. Robert Parrish would average 19, 10, and 2.5 and blocks. The Celtics won 62 games. They would face the Sixers in the conference finals once again. The Celtics would find themselves down 3-1, but the Celtics would win the next three games to make it to Larry's first finals. He would Average 27, 13, and 5 in the conference finals, but in the NBA finals, Bird would really struggle shooting the ball, shooting just 41%, averaging 15 points per game. But to make up for that, he averaged 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2.5 and steals. The Celtics would beat the Houston Rockets 4 2, but because of his shooting woes, the finals MVP would go to Cedric Maxwell, who averaged 19 and 10 on 57% shooting. Next season, Bird would average 23, 11, 6, and 2 on 50% shooting, and he'd be second in MVP voting, but the Celtics in their third matchup versus the Sixers would lose in seven games. They would lose in the second round next year, but in Bird's fifth season, he would win his first MVP, averaging 24 points, 10 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 2 steals, and a block, shooting 50% from the field. The Celtics would advance to the finals, facing the Magic Johnson-led Lakers. The rivalry between him and Magic reached the championship stage once again, this time in the NBA. Magic would average 18, 8, and 13.5 and assists, but Bird would match it with 27, 14, and 3.5 and assists. The Celtics would win in 7 games, and Bird would win Finals MVP. Next season, Bird would step up his game even further, putting up 29, 10, and 6.5 and assists, shooting 52% from the field, 43% from 3, and he was just 2% off from shooting 50-49 shooting 88% from the free throw line. He would win his second consecutive MVP, and the Celtics would face the Lakers for the second consecutive season. However, the result would not be the same, as the Lakers would win in six games. Bird would win his third consecutive MVP, making him one of three players to ever do this, averaging 26.7 assists, and despite being moved to small forward, he would average nearly 10 rebounds. He was just .4 off from shooting 50-40-90 in both field goals 
goal percentage and free throw percentage. The Celtics only lost one game in the first three rounds, and they would face the Hakeem Ralph Sampson Houston Rockets. Bird would average 24 points, 9.5 rebounds, 9.5 assists, and 2.7 steals. The Celtics would beat the Houston Rockets in six games, and the 86 Celtics would become regarded as one of the greatest teams of all time. The Celtics made it to the finals again in the following season, but they had to fight through the Bucks and Pistons, and the Lakers, who they played in the finals, made it there easily. Boston was beat up, and the Lakers were dominant. The Celtics lost in six games. Next season, Bird would have the best statistical year of his career, 30 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists, shooting 50-40-90. But the Celtics would lose to the Pistons in the conference finals. Next season, Bird would sit out with back issues, only playing 6 games, and for the next 3 seasons, his career would fizzle out as a back injury he got in the offseason a few years prior shoveling gravel led to chronic back issues which shortened his career significantly. He would play the last game of his career in Game 7 versus the Cleveland Cavaliers in the 92 playoffs. He would put up 12 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists, and then he would retire. The Converse weapon, that's to shoot, that's magic do what he was born to do. It may be so, but that's not all. They let Isaiah play like he's ten feet tall. Or the kind of moves that never fail. The weapon's the choice of Kevin McHale. The same is true for Mark McGuire. When I wear weapons, I'm on fire. But what can the weapons do for King? Well, I can do just about anything. You already know what you did for me. What? I walked away with the MVP. The Converse uh, weapon, the number one weapon in the NBA. Larry Bird was given the nickname Larry Legend for a reason. The reason being, the guy was just legendary. While his numbers may not stand out against some of the other candidates, though they are definitely impressive, and he is only a three-time champion, which isn't a lot compared to some other candidates, but he is arguably the most legendary player. Bird has so many iconic and just plain, well, legendary moments from his career. Bird had an eye for the dramatic. He was known for his trash talk. One of the things that led to Julius Irving iconically punching and strangling Bird was Larry trash talking him. As the game had gone along, Bird counted up how many points he had versus how many Irving had. By the end of the third, Bird had 42 and Irving had 6. Midway through the fourth, Bird told Irving to retire, which led to the altercation. He also famously walked into the locker room of the three-point contest, said, I hope all y'all are talking about who's coming second, and for the next two contests, he would shoot in his warm-ups and win both contests, winning three in a row, easily. He would famously often tell opponents what move he was about to make, then proceed to make it. He played a whole game left-handed, scoring 22 points left-handed, broke Kevin McHale's Celtics scoring record nine days after McHale broke the record, scoring so impressively that he eventually made the opposing team cheer for him because of how unbelievable he was. Those are just a few of many legendary moments. Bird is also one of the greatest clutch performers ever. The man had ice in his veins and he knew it. Bird was a three-time champion, three-time MVP, winning those back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, finals MVP twice, All-NBA first team nine times, second team twice, All-Defensive second team three times, Times, rookie of the Year, and a 12-time All-Star winning MVP once. For Bird, he was a great scorer, great rebounder, and great passer. Similar to Magic, he was very versatile. His passing often goes under the radar because of how good of a scorer he was. Bird won his fair share of individual awards and was a three-time champion, but those awards don't stack up as well against many other candidates, and Bird had the advantage of playing with one of the league's greatest six men and post players, Kevin McHale and one of the best defensive centers ever in Robert Parrish, as well as some other great teammates. So Bird definitely had his fair share of greatness, but the scale of it seems smaller than most of the other candidates.